truly honored to welcome D-Day to the stage, to the Creative Morning stage for reflection. Can we all give her a warm welcome? I built that in just in case I needed it. <laughs> I hope it was helpful for you too. Hi. <laughs> I have notes, so let me pull those out. My name is DJ. I'm very, very grateful to be here. I did one of these, a much smaller crowd, a few months ago, and I spent the whole time thanking everyone for being here. So I'm gonna try not to do that today. <sighs> My highest credential is human, but the one that brings me to this stage is most closely related to the work I do at Health and Mind. This is my team. 
Aren't they beautiful? I may have birthed this business, but I am the team captain for a group of very hardworking, dedicated, value-driven, reliable, beautiful, kind human beings. And I'm so very grateful. We provide mental health counseling out of our office in Midlothian, Virginia. Our work is challenging and rewarding on every end of the pendulum swing. But most importantly, it gives us the opportunity to connect with other people. So thank you for having us. I have two of my st uh, teammates here. I'm not going to point them out. But thank you for being here. This is where I'm going to tell you what it's like to be a therapist. Just a little bit. So for the last many, many years, I've sat in small rooms with one or more humans, more often than not, talking about some pretty serious life stuff, right? That role does not lend itself to much reciprocal disclosure. So the invitation to be here is unique because I get to talk about myself. <laughs> And I love a challenge. <laughs> Side note, those experiences also birth the DJ voice. It has a mind of its own. <laughs> so I begin to think, what version of myself would I like to reflect in a room of people who know nothing about me? Well, some of you do. But most of you are meeting me for the first time. So many things I could share, so, so many. But what I'd like for you to see is something I've been working on for a few years. I spend most of my life living my unlived life so that my children don't have to. And for the last, hi, hi child. <laughs> <laughs> and so I make these art pieces. I'm gonna show you a piece of art that I made and I built in time for applause, so I'm gonna let you, well, I'm gonna let you figure that out. When I rehearsed this with my son, he said, are you gonna say that? And I said, maybe. <laughs> and then he said, are you gonna say that? I said, maybe. <laughs> so I would like to show you this piece of art. I call it 41 Where. <laughs> For that I really appreciate it. I've been working on this flip. I'm almost to the floor. Can you tell? I'm almost to the floor. So there are other things I could tell you about my life. I have a full life. I could tell you about being an only child caretaker. Hey grandma. I could also tell you about the time I stopped watching TV for a few years and it changed my whole perspective on life. I still reflect on that time a lot. My favorite question, because it perplexed me so much, was when someone said, what do you do at home? <laughs> right? There are lots of things. I still have a visceral reaction when I think about it. There's so many, please do more than watch TV at home. I'm sure, okay, we do, we do. I want you to know that vulnerability is one of my superpowers. So are you ready for this? OK. What I'd most like for you to know about me today is that you are observing the human experience of burnout. I heard laughs. I heard, mm. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm a breather. It's OK. <laughs> um, I say that not so that you'll manage your expectations of me, or maybe a little, but mostly to give myself freedom to show up as I am. It's very important for me to be able to present and reflect myself in a way that is true. 
and living a full life. Basically, my, my definition of burnout is when you were like doing the most and it caught up with you. And it caught up with me. <laughs> pretty, in a pretty serious way. So, can we play a game? All right. So I respect and accept my reflection of burnout. And I respect that it may not be so visible. So I would like for you all, if you're open to it, to pretend you're at a museum and you just stumbled upon an exhibit of this human being, this human experience of burnout. And I'd like for you to ooh and ah as if you were looking at an exhibit in the form of inhales and exhales. It'll go a little something like this. We practice this. Let me see if I can get it. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. I'm going to turn slowly while you watch. I look around and everybody's mouth is open. <laughs> Do I look like burnout? No. no? What's it even look like? Let's pull out our phones. If you have your phone, pull it out. And let's take a selfie. <laughs> As you take this selfie, I'm gonna say some stuff. <laughs> so when you take your picture, have a look at it. <laughs> All right. So as you look at your picture, I would like for you to consider what you see in your reflection that may not be so visible. So stare at yourself for a second. What do you see in your reflection that may not be so visible? While you do this, I'm going to provide you with an affirmation. In community, we achieve harmony through acceptance of others. Internally, we achieve harmony through acceptance of self. We can find harmony through accepting our reflection without judgment. Take a minute to offer your reflection some acceptance. Now, if your reflection looks anything like mine, allow me to introduce to you Operation Neuroplasticity. <laughs> A quest to restore brain power, maintain perspective, and regulate my nervous system. As the superhero slash main character slash Beyonce of my own life, <laughs> I 
would like to share with you my list of superpowers, a small list. Believe I have a, a list in my notes in my phone. I'm constantly adding to it. I think I'm like at 25 or 30 by now. But here are some things that help me to stay connected to myself. Face-to-face -face connection, which I heard before. Drinking water. Everyone sip if you, if you have some with you. Regular movement. Y'all see me flipping around. I'm constantly doing things, trying to keep my body limber. Breathing on purpose. My son and I had a debate about whether on purpose was a real thing because you don't have to think about it. Your body's just willing to do it. But when you do it on purpose, you're bringing a mindfulness to the activity, which can be so expansive for your body. Play. If you don't have kids, find some kids to play with. I got some for you. They, oh, I do. I have, I have enough. They, they may need them. <laughs> they help you to stay young, trust me. And then get out and get some sun. It's just so, so wonderful for the skin. It does not surprise me. I'm going to lay back in this low chair. It doesn't surprise me that I forgot to add gratitude to this small list. Burnout will have you really negative. Burnout will make you negative. And I am constantly reminding myself. So I sent the slides Wednesday. And I thought about gratitude last night when I was getting ready for this and crying in the shower, thinking about seeing all of y'all's faces today. So I got all of my, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being, thank you, thank you. I got that out last night in the shower. But gratitude, add it to the list. It's important, it's important. Can we play another game? How are we doing with all the silence? Thumbs up if we're doing okay with the silence. Okay, so there's more coming. There's more coming. <laughs> One thing that I challenge myself to do, if you haven't noticed already, is convince other humans to breathe in creative and productive ways. So we're going to do an exercise in breathing on purpose. If you have your phone, pull it back out. This time I'd like for you to pull up your phone front-facing camera so that you can see yourself. And I invite you to watch yourself breathe. So in order to see yourself breathe, you may need to be able to see a part, at least a, some part of your chest in the, in the frame. Notice the movement your body makes when you take in oxygen. Your body is made to sustain this activity naturally, without any assistance. <clears throat> as long as you're living, your body is going to be doing this thing. Without it, you die. <laughs> you would, <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't you die without oxygen? So your body obviously needs this, right? Imagine what could happen to your body if it had more of this thing that it needs. Like you can make the decision to give your body more of this life force on purpose. Not just because it's willing to do it anyway while you sleep, you know, but because you're choosing to show up and participate in giving your body more oxygen. Imagine what it could do for your stress level, for your nervous system. 
I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I feel like a bear is constantly chasing me. The bear of life. <laughs> I'm sure we could all identify with having a bear in our life, or a lion, just depends on whatever animal, it doesn't matter. And sometimes there really is no bear. We're just activated. And so breathing has a way of reminding the body that it's actually safe. That you, you don't have to run. You're a gazelle. You don't have to run. You can graze and drink water and mate or whatever, you know? <laughs> Breathe on purpose. It's really important. When you breathe, or do any mindfulness for that sake, I think it's very common for people to wonder if they're doing it right. In fact, the thoughts about whether you're doing it right can hijack the process, right? I encourage you to think of breathing in any mindfulness. When, you, when, you, when, you wanna, when you're wondering whether you're doing it right, count the number of times that you refocus on the activity. So as you're doing it, and you're thinking about whether you're doing it right or what you're gonna do next, bring your mind back to the activity, and that's mindfulness. I see some head nods, which means I'm making sense here today. <laughs> Awesome, 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 awesome. I'm gonna leave you with one more thing. I call these love nuggets. During COVID, I started a podcast. I know, you all did, I know. <laughs> I started a podcast and I called it um, Love Quickies. <laughs> and they were, they were, um, no, that's not what it was called. It was called Word and Deed. Word and Deed. Love Quickies was the tagline. And it was 15 minutes worth of me rambling like I'm doing here today. <laughs> and at the end of each of these episodes, I would offer a few love nuggets. My way of wrapping the whole thing up. Your love nuggets for today are to breathe, to seek opportunities to see your reflection with acceptance because you are worthy of your own attention. And gratitude. Please be grateful for everything you have. It's very important. It gives you more stuff. <coughs> stuff meaning community, not stuff stuff. Don't care about stuff. It's not important. <laughs> community. Being grateful for your, your community offers you more community. Look at all this community we have today. I didn't have any of this community yesterday. And now I'm here. And I'm grateful. Oh, there's snaps and claps. OK. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
about June of, okay, so in June of this year, I made the decision to step away from direct practice to provide space for me to do things like this, but also out of necessity. I was tired, and when I started to think about all the people I care for, I had to be clear about which roles were necessary versus which were optional. And we're at the place in health and mind where my role as a, as a therapist was optional. And so I've had to make that boundary, that judgment call in a lot of places with a lot of relationships. But then also, I have this thing I started a few, a few, a few months ago where if someone asks me for something, I'll give you an example. My children like grilled cheese sandwiches. I'd make them grilled cheese, but I eat the first one. <laughs> Whether I was hungry or not. <laughs> so every now and then, if I'm engaged in some stretching activity, I just say, girl, eat the first grilled cheese. Eat the first grilled cheese. And it's really something I have to do for myself to make sure that I'm taking care of myself all the time, whether that be through the movement or through, or through the breathing or getting enough rest. It's a constant, a constant, constant activity because it is a lot of output. So I'm in the position now in burnout management where I'm offering more to myself. Thank you for asking. Eat your grilled cheese, I love it. Anyone else have a question? DJ, I really admired how you were able to bring everybody's energy down while you were facilitating. And as someone who's getting into it, I find that my energy will rise up and I'll kind of be like this, where I'd much rather stay in my natural zone of down here. So how do you manage to do that whenever you're talking in front of these large crowds of people? Silence. <laughs> I, I don't do anything until I'm ready try to do that. I don't speak until I'm ready. Because honestly, if I did, it would just be weird. I'm a pretty strange person, I promise. <laughs> so I just try to give myself space to slow down. And the breathing helps. Thank you. Thanks for asking. And sharing, too. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being here today and bringing all of us together. and. Um, it was really amazing uh, speech. Uh, how long have you been working on your front flip, and what are your goals? <laughs> what are your goals moving forward with it? I love this question. <laughs> so I always wanted to be a gymnast. So when I said I'm trying to live my unlived life, so that these children don't have to like go to the Olympics for me. <laughs> I've been working on this flip intermittently for three years. I hibernate in the winter, I don't move much. I give myself permission not to do much. Uh, but then I always come back to it. And I want to, I want to flip around and dance. I love to dance. I want to just turn on some music and just move my body in ways that seem, seem fluid. I showed someone this video, the video of me flipping, and he said, my body would have disassembled if I had to <laughs> And it's my goal to be able to move forever. And I know that I have to move today in order to accomplish that. So movement, I'm just, I just want to move. Just keep moving. Thanks for asking. Can I make a comment? Of course. Your front flip was perfect because your squat that you started with was perfect. Oh, I'm a, I'm a squatter now. I can squat. Y'all want to see? <laughs> I'm an excellent squatter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Oh, we've got one. How do you deal with grief and work when they're happening at the same time? Such a great question. 
I was asking about dealing with grief and work when they're happening at the same time. The first thing that comes to mind is that I'm allowed to feel a lot of things at once. And when you surround yourself, I have, the flex, I have such a unique work experience that I, I get to surround myself with people that I like, <laughs> you know, we don't always get that. And in, in my work setting, I offer a lot of trust and support and that it just recycles into my life in a lot of ways. And so when I'm managing my own grief, I think the neat thing that happens in a, like when you work at a therapy practice is that you can kind of like get therapized by your coworkers a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, my personal experience with any emotion, grief or anyone, I have pockets, places where I can go and, and get support. I have a lot of internal resources that I've built over the years. Thank you, therapy. Thank you, therapy. Go to therapy. Oh, therapy, yeah. <laughs> therapy. <laughs> therapy. That is the answer to your question. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> DJ, I have a question. So, how do you deal with folks that are not okay with silence? Okay with silence. So, you talked about our response and what we can do to ground ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the mm -hmm. silence, DJ told me um, we do have TVs, correct? Because I will, I will start my talk in silence. I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> so that, that experience, just you said to incorporate it in our daily, so. I have a friend in this room that is the most silent person I know. And sometimes it's uncomfortable because you wanna fill the space with stuff. And I think it's similar to practicing patience. It's just something that you just have to practice and manage the discomfort that comes with it. So rather than try to fill the space with words, reflect on why it's so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Quietly. Quietly. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Does anyone else have any questions? Our friend from Baltimore. Okay, Baltimore. Hi. Hi. Um, my question for you uh, is: uh, being an entrepreneur, how do you balance that with other areas of your I life? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't either. I'm sorry. Can you please repeat that? <laughs> Being an entrepreneur, especially in a therapeutic practice, how do you balance that with other areas of your life? Entrepreneurship, it, it, it is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice of time, energy, resources. It is, and it's not just an individual sacrifice. My family experiences it. I love that my kids are here because they get to see all the stuff I talk about when I have to work. Like, I think they hate my work because <laughs> I'm always doing it. But having them here shows them why. Like, what, are we, what is it that I'm actually doing? And I think it helps. So a part of the balance is inclusion. It's also setting better boundaries. This year I've had to, you know, step away from direct practice and I've had to really set a lot of clear, firmer boundaries around how much I'm willing to give health in mind because it's like a toddler just needs, needs me. 
but I have so many like wonderful caretakers that work with us that can do the work um, setting clear work hours has also been very helpful having the right resources internal and external those things have really helped thanks for asking Thank you so, so much. Can we give her a hand? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank y'all too. <laughs> Thanks, kids. And thank you. Thank you. DJ, thank you so much.